able to record on this computer. There you go. Okay, now you may start. Okay, Maria Haddon is um, our alder woman. So let's see if she would, I'm going to put her on the spot because she didn't know I was going to ask. See, she wants to say a few words. I'm sure she's got something up her sleeve that she I was going to say, <laughs> come on, alder, alder people always are able to talk, right? Right. Um, I will keep it brief though. And Natalia is also on a meeting and she gets uh, speaking prioritization at her meeting today. Um, it's good to see uh, your faces. And I know some folks who I haven't met in person um, just, you know, uh, I'll say as we near the end of another unusual year, um, I'm really proud of all the work that Rogers Park Business Alliance and all the SSA members, um, the staff, the broader community, what's been happening in our broader um, small business community. Um, people have proven so resilient. You guys have done so much hard work over these last couple of years that I, I know myself and my office appreciate. I know the broader community does as well. Um, so excited to um, have a nice reflection with you on 2021 and um, get ready for another year full of uncertainty, but uh, in 2022, but what will certainly also be um, some really great innovation, um, right? Some creativity. Um, I think our community has risen to the challenge and the SSAs and, and the Business Alliance have been a large part of that. So thank you guys um, for all that you do. Thank, Thank you, you. Maria. Um, and now um, I want to introduce um, Carolina Juarez, who manages our special service area uh, number 24, which is our Clark Morris and Glenwood special service area. Um, Carolina is our business district manager. Um, and Cindy Plant, who manages the Howard Street SSA 19, Devon SSA 43, and Sheridan SSA 54, um, is our economic development manager. And they're the ones that are going to make today's presentation and let you know all the great stuff that we've been doing all year. So Carolina, take it away. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sandy, for the presentation, um, the introduction. And Maria, I'm so glad you're here. Um, it's always a pleasure. And um, very, very pleased to see so many new people here and um, people we've known for a long time. Um, so this is recording, um, and if Cindy, are you able to admit people as I run through this? Yeah, if anybody pops up, I don't see anyone in the waiting room right now, but yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, it says there are. Hmm. Oh, okay. I, if I'm not a host, I don't think. Okay. So that might be why. All right, then. Um, I may I may have to do that in the middle of speaking. So let's let's get this show rolling. Welcome everybody. And um, what we're going to start with is um, a short description for those of you who may be new to the world of SSAs. Um, a short description of what an SSA is, and um, you know it's always very difficult to explain to people in a very short manner what an SSA is because it's such an intricate process. But um, after being an SSA manager for um, over, I wanna say seven years, um, I've, I've figured out how to explain it. So basically an SSA is a program that is funded through a tax levy, which means an additional property tax that property owners pay into the program. Um, these funds are um, collected obviously through Cook County, passed over to city of Chicago and city of Chicago identifies a nonprofit organization to administer the program. Um, the nonprofit organization um, is usually called the sole service provider. And the Riders Park Business Alliance has been the sole service provider um, of three SSAs for a long time and four SSAs currently. Um, we, were, we will get into the details of which ones they are and what the boundaries are and um, who the committee of commissioners are. Um, but basically, these funds are um, administered by the Rogers Park Business Alliance, and um, the, there is a group of volunteers who are made up of um, 
property owners, business owners, and people who work within the boundaries of the SSA who basically make recommendations on how to spend the budget or the, the money collected from um, property taxes for this program. Um, what do SSAs do? So SSAs uh, funded, um, funded pro uh, projects by the SSA usually include public way maintenance and beautification, uh, things that you may see around the, um, the neighborhood like planters, um, banners and public art, things that are visual that make the thoroughfare or the commercial districts basically look nicer. Um, we also do a lot of district marketing and advertising uh, with special events and um, sometimes, you know, hiring a PR firm to help us promote the community because the end goal is always to um, celebrate what we have here in Rogers Park and let the world uh, outside of Rogers Park know how exciting the neighborhood is and also how it may be a destination, obviously also to make people who live in the area feel comfortable and happy to live in, in a neighborhood and maybe even take ownership of the neighborhood that they live in. That's always the goal. Um, we do help business owners with um, you know, technical assistance and kind of help them through and maneuver the red tape or, you know, just the processes that it takes to become a business owner in the neighborhood. Um, as I mentioned before, we do special events and promotional activities. Um, there are also programs that are offered in order to support businesses when they aren't able to pay for improvements on their own. The Registrar, um, the special service areas are able to support businesses through um, a rebate program, which I will get into more detail. So, um, and I, dish, I didn't mention this, but uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run through the presentation. And if you have any questions, um, please leave them until the end. And also remember to stay muted if you're not speaking. Um, so let's get into uh, specifics about each um, SSA. And you may have heard me already um, call in a special service area an SSA, which is the short term form of it. We administer four SSAs, the first one, and it's the first one because they're identified by numbers and the first one would be 19, and that is Howard Street and Jarvis Square as of this year. Um, these, uh, the boundaries of this SSA are along Howard, starting at um, Ridge and then going east all the way to Sheridan. Um, I should mention though that the SSA does include both sides of the street between Sheridan and the CTA tracks and only the Chicago side of the street between the CTA tracks and Ridge, which, be, which would be the Southern part of the street. Um, and now currently, um, currently it includes um, Jarvis Square so that is this, this is the updated map, yeah. So you could see here, the updated map of where it go, goes all the way to and it includes Jarvis Square. So um, that makes us happy to be able to include those folks. Um, as I mentioned before, there's a group of volunteers who uh, make recommendations on how to spend the money, where to allocate um, certain spending items. And um, these are the, this group is called commissioners. These commissioners are appointed by um, the mayor. <clears throat> they do go through a process, a vetting process, I suppose. And these are the commissioners meet the commissioners who make recommendations for um, the Howard Street and Jarvis Square SSA 19. Um, I'm not able to see if any of, of the commissioner, commissioners are present today, um, but we will um, make maybe um, celebrate you at the end when it's the questions um, portion. 
Gail Howard, Michael Smith, Charlotte Walters, and David Scora are the current commissioners. We have a couple of pending commissioners. Um, and a, and, and uh, as the city asks us, we, um, we have a specific amount of seats on this commission. So currently SSA 19 does have three vacancies. So if there are any business owners, property owners, or people who work within the area or live within the area, um, uh, who are interested in becoming a commissioner, reach out to Cindy or I, because there are three vacancies. And um, the next one is SSA number 24, which is, which includes Clark Street, Morse Avenue, and Glenwood Avenue. And real quick, I'll go through the boundaries. Um, Clark Street, and currently includes uh, between Albion on the south end and um, Birchwood on the north end. It also includes Morse Avenue between Clark Street and Sheridan. It includes Glenwood Avenue, both sides of the train tracks between Greenleaf and Pratt. Um, I should mention that it also includes the businesses on Lunt and Greenleaf between Clark Street and Ravenswood and the properties on Ravenswood between um, Lunt and Estes. That's a lot of information, but um, if you live within the area, it probably makes sense to you. And um, uh, one thing about SSAs is that they have a life term and usually when I when appointed by the uh, mayor as an SSA. Um, an SSA has a lifespan usually of 15, 10 to 15 years. Um, the SSA, the, the Clark Morse Glenwood SSA um, had a 10 year term that is expiring in 2022. And so I just wanna mention that we will be going through a reconstitution process in order to be the sole service provider for SSA 24 another 15 years, hopefully. Um, the only difference, everything will be the same. The only difference is that we are including, we are trying to expand the boundaries um, in, in this next life term to include um, a portion of the south end of Clark Street, which it would be between Albion and Devon. And these are the um, commissioners for SSA 24, if you know them, um, you know, see them around the neighborhood, give them a shout out because they do know a lot about what's going on in the community. Wally Anderson from Rogers Park Social, Robert Clarista from Byline Bank, Irene Bermudis from Chicago Math and Science, Elijah Duncan, Lifeline Theater, Al Goldberg, he's a property owner, major property owner within the SSA, Chris Johnson, who's our chair, he's a property owner as well, Nick Koziak, he is the owner of State Farm Insurance, and Alan Smith, who's another property owner. And we do have one vacancy in that SSA if anybody is interested. Um, our next SSA is SSA number 43. Um, that includes the Devon Avenue. Ooh, and I hope I don't mess this up, but, oh, I have the map in front of me. Um, Devon Avenue is all of Devon between, I wanna say, um, Kedzie and Damon, not, yes, okay. And Western between Granville and Arthur. Yes, um, so that's the SSA uh, um, on Devon Avenue. And these are the commissioners who currently sit um, on this um, commission. Sanhita from Tax Consulting Inc. Avi Berliani, Great Chicago Food and Beverage, Mohammed Junaid, Sabrina Heary Restaurant, Urshad, he's property owner, Mara Nemes from Wheels of Chicago, Jayesh Shawa Kramani from Regal Jewelers, Pete Balavanis from Carrie's Lounge, and Mohammed Ramiz from Sign America. We do currently have one vacancy on that commission. And our last SSA is SSA 54, our shortest, our smallest baby. Um, it includes Sheridan Road between Devon and Pratt. No, Devon and Farwell. Um, 
yeah, that's it. This is the most straightforward one. And the commissioners currently are Nick Anderson from Hampton Inn by Hilton, Chris Bell from Flats and Sharp News and Company, John for Clark from Loyola University, Tony Fox, the owner of the New 400 Theater, Heather Hill, who's a resident uh, within the area, and Sarah Lukens from Shop, our very um, favorite Chi Town Magpie. Um, and we have six commissioners, which means we have, we have one vacancy left uh, on this commission. So um, that's what an SSA is. This is the boring part of the presentation. Don't worry, wake up, let's go. Now the fun part begins and I'm going to, oh yeah, let me um, really quickly tell you a little bit about how the money spent. You, um, average spending usually is, as you see in this pie graph, majority goes to public way aesthetics, which I mentioned before is all the visuals, all the pretty stuff you see out on the commercial corridors. Um, and then the second largest um, portion of the funds go to customer attraction. Um, as you can see in this pie, you may also see that um, spending goes towards things like economic development, which includes master planning and um, you know, long-term visioning for the district, safety programs, that speaks for itself. SSA management and personnel is um, a small portion of what the spending goes to as well. Um, and like I said, we're gonna go into depth about what this, what, 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 it, what is it that we're doing? What, what are we doing for public aesthetics and customer attraction? So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Cindy so she could uh, talk to you all about public aesthetics. You're muted. Good morning, everybody. I'm Cindy Plant, um, Economic Development Manager at RPDA. So I'm the program manager for three of the four SSAs that, that RPDA manages. And I knew my cat was going to join this Zoom as soon as I started talking. Um, yeah, there she is. Um, so public way aesthetics, um, that's you know the biggest share of that pie chart, 43% um, on average of SSA budgets every year. Um, so it's a staple item. It makes up the largest share of budgets um, and it basically includes all of the neighborhood beautification efforts that the SSAs undertake. So landscaping, holiday decorations, public art, uh, litter pickup, power washing, snow cleanup, um, all of that um, is sort of the bread and butter of, of, of public way aesthetics. Um, this year, um, we also were selected to be part of the city's Chicago Alfresco program. Um, our PBA submitted uh, applications for two um, areas that we wanted to be considered for, for this program um, and this funding. So it was Jarvis Square and also Glenwood Avenue um, north of Morse. Um, and so getting this funding allows us now to, to basically really invest heavily in higher quality site furnishings and also programming um, for these areas. The, the, the plan is to close um, the, these, both are one-way streets um, to vehicular traffic in order to create um, enhanced outdoor seating areas and public gathering space for the community. Um, so what we've got up here right now is the, the draft site plan for Glenwood Avenue that's been submitted to CDOT. Um, it, in, it, it includes site furnishings um, such as uh, like festoon decorative lighting, um, picnic tables, uh, enhanced landscaping, and some uh, some pergola type structures to provide you know shade and 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 rain um, rain. What's the word I'm looking for? Keeping the rain off your head so you can sit out there regardless of the weather. We we know from the past year and a half um, that. You know, people, not everyone's comfortable yet dining indoors, and we want to create opportunities for people to continue sitting outside. So this is sort of the mood board of, of what's in store uh, for, for Glenwood coming up this summer um, on, on Jarvis Square. Here's the, uh, the draft site plan for that one. Um, Jarvis Square would be sort of closed in the same footprint that it, that it has now. Um, we sort of treated um, other projects around the around the city and region as a mood board um, for this. What we're looking to do is bring in these large planters with the mastins in the center of them um, that can create a, a, a grid above the street um, that'll be used to, you know, hang 
potentially shade sales, seasonal decorations, um, all sorts of good stuff to sort of create a sense of place on the Jarvis Avenue um, square in front of the businesses there. And we will also be looking to include um, a pavement mural, um, which we have uh, a draft design for that was uh, included in the uh, site plan um, and a shaded parklet uh, along the south side of the street uh, to provide additional seating and, and programming space uh, for community events in that area. Um, the picture here up on the left um, is actually from this past weekend. Uh, we had uh, Urban Tables came out uh, and did roasted chestnuts during the Shop Jarvis Square Artisan Market. Um, artisan markets are something that we're going to look to continue as part of Al Fresco into 2022. And uh, we're really excited to to get started and and start uh, start ordering our, our site furnishings. Um, one of the other um, neat sort of first of its kind um, public way aesthetics programs that that we started with Sheridan Road um, is this Bella Wrap um, product that we've started applying to utility poles and utility boxes. Um, so. This is the first time it's been used in Chicago, so it kind of took forever to get the permits and start ruling it out. Um, but it basically is a, a thick vinyl wrap that you can get, you know, printed with any decorative pattern you want. We sort of stayed with like sort of a neutral sort of leaf pattern for this first uh, rollout. Um, but it's in addition to providing that pop of color, um, it, the surface of this is textured so that it's basically completely resistant to stickers and graffiti. Um, so. We've started um, a, a section of Sheridan Road around North Shore and Sheridan uh, with six utility poles and a utility box um, that we've uh, applied this to um, as part of a pilot. Um, and we're going to be working with CDOT to try and expand it um, beyond this intersection uh, within SSA 54 as budget allows and potentially also to um, additional SSAs because, you know, not only is it decorative, but it, we found that it is moving the needle as far as of, you know, people not being able to graffiti on street infrastructure, um, which is really exciting because we have seen an uptick this year in the amount of tagging that we're seeing and, and sort of flyers and stickers being applied to polls. Um, so this reduces the workload for our maintenance crew. Um, shout out to Brandon Harding, our maintenance director um, and, and his team. Uh, we couldn't do all that we do uh, with Public Way Aesthetics um, without you and your, and your team there. Um, so that's that's Brandon there uh, putting up the Bella wrap uh, on one of the polls uh, when we did it uh, this past year. Uh, landscaping, uh, always a popular item. Uh, it's it's uh, something that we do across all four SSAs um, and includes both above ground planter pots that you see here, as well as um, some of these in ground beds uh, in the areas that have them. Um, for Devon Avenue this year, we actually doubled the number of above ground planter pots um, and also added uh, additional perennial shrubbery to some of the in ground planter beds. Um, so we'll, we'll be continuing to do that next year and also rolling out additional landscaping in those two alfresco areas, Jarvis and Glenwood. Um, some of the other you know, key areas, again, shout out to, to Brandon and the crew here, um, as well as our vendors. Um, that we hire for things like landscaping and, and power washing and such. Um, they make it possible to do district window washing in, in some of the districts, um, sidewalk cleanup. Um, we, have a, we have groups doing litter pickup in both Howard and, and Devon Avenue, um, graffiti removal, um, and sidewalk power washing, which I think is the next slide. Let's see. Oh, no, snow removal is the next slide. Um, so two of our four districts do snow removal on the sidewalks, um, since that's not something that's provided by the city. Um, it's, you know, offered as as sort of a perk of being part of the SSA. Business owners and, and property owners are, are still responsible for removing snow um, in front of their properties, as, as is the case everywhere else in the city. But one of the things the SSA is able to do is have contractors out um, to, to do a, a pretty hefty share of the snow removal. The, uh, there's usually a contract in place um, that has a specific trigger as to when the, the snow providers will come out. Um, for uh, Howard Street, I believe it's two inches. For Devon, I think it's one inch um, where they come out within uh, a certain, a specified number of hours of snowfall. And then Brandon and his crew come through behind them and basically clean up the crosswalk intersections um in our districts so um you know we do remind everybody you know that that snow does still remain businesses 
you know, responsibility, we encourage people to, to salt to, you know, help keep our business districts accessible to customers. Um, and one of the ways that we do that is by providing the supplementary snow removal, um, particularly for, for Devon Avenue and for Howard Street. Um, so thank you, Brandon, uh, for all that you do with snow. And then here's our pressure washing slide. Um, so we have a company that we hire to do um, sidewalk power washing uh, for Devon Avenue. They come three times a year. Um, so that gets up gum, it gets up tobacco stains, uh, any, any of that nastiness that gets on the sidewalk um, gets cleaned up uh, on Devon. We also have done it a few times this year for Howard Street, sort of on an as needed basis. Um, so that's power washing. Holiday decorations, always a popular one. Um, this year is the first year that we have included Jarvis Square for holiday tree lights, um, which is really exciting now that they're part of the SSA. Um, so that's, uh, that's the picture on the left here. Um, one of the trees that we uh, were able to get lights put on on Jarvis. Um, SSA 24 has historically not been able to do lights due to limitations of power access. Um, but one thing that we have always done has been um, including incorporating like holiday themes into our winter landscaping, which is what you're seeing here on the right. Um, although this year we are gonna be adding some lights to SSA 24, which is really exciting. I think that work is starting this week. Um, Devon has had decorative lights on the poles for, for many years. They were sort of, you know, really devastated by the tornado that we saw in the summer of 2020. And we have been trying to source replacement lights pretty much ever since. Um, because of all the supply chain disruptions that, that we've seen in sourcing products you know, from overseas and, and really all over the place, um, because that's a custom installation, we've had a hard time getting it. But I'm, I'm pleased to report for any Devon commissioners that are here or maybe watching the video, um, we signed the contract this week to order the lights for Devon. So hopefully those will be coming in, if not this month, early 2022. Um, so we'll, we're excited to have those lights come back. Um, it may not be for the holiday season, but, but maybe that's okay. It'll bring, I think, a much needed, you know, pop of light and color to Devon in January and February here in Chicago, which is like never a super fun time. So we're excited about that project and really excited about our holiday lights. If you haven't been to Jarvis at night in the last couple of weeks, they really look fantastic, as do the ones on Sheridan and Howard Street. So. I think that's the last slide of Public Way. Thank you, yep. Cindy. Um, thank you, everyone. You, you're doing a great job at being good listeners. Um, here we go. Now the next um, category we're going to talk about is business, di business district marketing, um, which it you know, as it says here, it is a, or a tool for us to attract customers to Rogers Park as well as to basically let our surroundings know that Rogers Park is the place to be. And these are our ways in which we do that um, and in which we did that this year. In 2021, <clears throat> we had a couple events on Howard Street celebrating Halloween. And um, I believe we did a trick or treat event on October 29th, which is the Friday before the weekend. Uh, where um, every uh, our many businesses in the district were given candy to pass out and we promoted this to the community so that um, people and residents would feel comfortable to walk around the neighborhood um, and trick-or-treat with their families. Um, in addition to that, we did um, a couple a couple weeks before Halloween, we did sort of a um, uh, pop-up event where we hired our very favorite 3D artist, 3D chalk artist, Nate Baranowski, to come and do um, a piece over on the corner of Jarvis. Um, I lied. Uh, Howard, Greenview, and Rogers. Um, as you can see here in the pictures, this is what he did. It was a really big hit. People came out and participated, took pictures. And, you know, um, the point is we, we want to incentivize to people that it's it's fun to spend some time in your neighborhood and to um, um, uh, give business to the businesses. Um, there's a picture in this slide uh, of a band we did have 
um, a brass band come through and, you know, just to make it more fun. They walked around the neighborhood and um, made everybody feel festive. Uh, we also, um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about placemaking um, uh, further along in this presentation, but you see this tent in this picture, and that is our monthly pop-up people spot um, where we situated a, the people spot in front of Lost Eras, uh, which we believe was one of the, you know, more pertinent businesses for Halloween. And um, we had board games, we had free coffee, um, just kind of like invite the community to feel okay about walking around and maybe um, seeing this people spot, taking a seat and looking around and um, again, taking ownership of their community. Um, so that's that. And then um, we did do a taco crawl this year, which was super, super successful. Um, we, um, SSA 24 has done a taco crawl in the past. However, um, it was it was paused the event for, for a minute um, in an effort to include more, more businesses than just uh, one type of business. But um, by popular demand, we brought it back in 2021. And as you see in the slide pictures, the event was sold out. It was so popular. It included 17 restaurants, 17, I said 17, 17 taco um, um, Mexican restaurants, um, Latino restaurants, or no, I'm sorry, just restaurants who were providing a taco, to be clear. Um, and it speaks a lot to the amount of dining that exists on Clark Street. We heard many people, many event goers talk about how they um, visited businesses they never knew existed on Clark Street. So, you know, that is a success for us. We want to expose the community to the businesses that exist within the area so that these business owners can continue to be a success um, and economic development continues to flourish. Um, Howard Street did a walk chalk Howard Street. Um, you know, I, uh, several years ago, Howard Street, did, Howard Street did a chalk Howard um, outdoor special summer event. And um, due to the pandemic, the event wasn't able to continue in its original form. So um, Cindy got creative and, um, you know, hired Nate Baranowski again to do really cool 3D chalk um, paint um, pieces of uh, aspects of individual businesses. Um, these 3D pictures that you see are best enjoyed through video and photos. So um, the, uh, incur the, the, the invitation to the community was to walk around Howard Street and take a look at every single piece that, it, that uh, was made for all the businesses. So again, um, the uh, goal is to get people to come out and just be and shop in the commercial district. So these are some of the pictures that you see here. Uh, you may, I believe you may still walk around Howard and check these out. And the Glenwood Sunday Market is kind of uh, one of our favorite babies. Um, Glenwood Sunday Market has always found its home on Glenwood Avenue, as you can see by the name. However, you know, as um, many things go, um, because of the pandemic, things needed to shift and we needed to find a new home due to um, um, city and uh, regulations and uh, uh, requirements. Uh, we couldn't be on the street, so we needed to find a private property. Therefore, Glenwood Sunday Market moved over since last year to Pratt, uh, over by Pratt and Sheridan. And um, it is one of our most successful programs. It, uh, in, it, it invites on an average of 
seven, uh, I want to say um, 19 vendors from farmers who are uh, no more than 200 miles from the city of Chicago. Um, and in addition to selling organic food from these farms, um, the Glenwood Sunday Mark Market offers um, an opportunity for people with um, the link card to be able to shop at Glenwood Sunday Market. And not only that, you um, are able to shop at the Sunday Market with your link and get matched up to $25. So if you spend 25, you get $25 more. So you get to spend 50. It's awesome. Um, I believe about $16,000 was given away this year through that program. We love Glenwood Sunday Market. Um, we don't know what the future location of the Glenwood Sunday Market is for 2022. Um, so that we will make an announcement once that's settled, but um, uh, don't fret, it's, it's still gonna be around. Uh, one of the uh, special events uh, that SSA 24 sponsors is the Glenwood Avenue Arts Festival. It's a huge festival that happens over here by our office on Morse Avenue in Glenwood. It's a three-day event uh, focused on artists this year was its 20th anniversary. This festival has been going on for 20 years. It invites uh, over 115 vendors who are all artists um, in some way or form. Um, there's craft beer, there's local businesses selling food. And um, as you can see in the picture, uh, a very robust lineup of musicians to get people to come out and have fun. Um, one of the things we've been working on uh, Clark Street is a master plan, which was unveiled, I want to say, at the end of 2017, early 2018. And um, now in 2021, we're able to see some of the, imp the, the recommendations be implemented. And you can see them here. I don't know if anyone has driven over by Clark and Chase yet, but one of the recommendations in our master plan was to improve the safety of the crosswalk uh, over by Chicago Math and Science Academy. So our consultant came up with a great idea on how to do that. Um, and, you know, uh, we were able to get CDOT on board, the Chicago Department of Transportation, to um, help us get um, new bump outs, new signage, move the bus stop, get an intersection stamp. And I've heard some testimonials from people already saying how much safer that intersection is for people who are crossing the street on Clark Street from one side to the other. So um, not only is it safer, but it's nicer. Um, and, it, 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 and it does follow the um, brand standards that we did create through the master plan, which you can see some of the visuals here. Um, uh, in response to everything that was going on in the world through the pandemic, the Rogers Park Business Alliance came together and decided to, let's, let's think about how we can pick up the, lift the spirits of the community through, through economic development. And so we decided to cut, to create a placemaking committee to come up with ideas that would liven up and activate outdoor spaces along the commercial corridor. And so what the committee came up with was to do a temporary people spot, which is the term used in the economic development world for taking over a parking spot and not using it as a parking spot, but using it as a place for people to convene and just be on the street and, you know, like kind of like think of an alternate use for an, a conventional purpose uh, of a specific space. Um, so what we did is we got our um, tents together every month, our decorations, our flags and chairs, 
we bought games from Athena board game um, and we had music, there's a Jenga there. And we would, we would choose um, a specific business every month to situate ourselves in front of every month. And in this picture, you can see us in front of homegrown wrappings. Um, you know, many people are wondering, what's the purpose of this? Like, this is so weird. It doesn't make any sense. Like, why, why would I want to sit on a parking spot? But it gets people to think about, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it, it's not, um, it's, it's not as helpful to just drive through a thoroughfare. It is help to the business community. It's helpful for you, your person, your body to be on the sidewalk and to, to be exposed to what's in front of you. Because as you drive by, you aren't able to see the intricacies and the details of what the identities are of every business. And so when you sit out in front of homegrown wrappings, you get to look closer and you get to say, oh, wow, they do X, Y, and Z. I need X, Y, and Z. And, you know, that brings more customers to the neighborhood. So um, uh, one of our placemaking people spots, as I mentioned earlier, was at the Howard um, Halloween event uh, a couple of weeks before Halloween. And then now I'm going to pass it over back to Cindy to talk about business retention and our traction. There we go. I'm unmuted. Um, yeah. So, I mean, my my official job title is is economic development manager. So, business attraction is is and always has been part of my my job responsibilities. So, trying to help get our vacancies filled in our business districts. Um, but retention has really been the focus of the last eighteen months due to COVID. Trying to sort of help our existing businesses get through this crisis and 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 adapt to the the world that we live in now. Um, so SSAs are a great tool for addressing really both of those concerns. Um, if we want to move over to the next slide, we can sort of get into that a little bit more. So one of the things that we wanted to do to, you know, bring attention to and, and, and show some love to the businesses that opened during the pandemic um, has been by doing this ribbon cutting extravaganza that we had a couple of weeks ago. Um, we did 17 ribbon cuttings in an afternoon. Um, included and included uh, our, some of our elected officials. So Alderman Haddon uh, participated with us uh, as well as State Senator Mike Simmons. Um, so we went across all of the Rogers Park business districts um, to celebrate all of the businesses that that opened since March of 2020 that that, that were able to schedule and, and participate, which ended up being like 17 of them. Um, so it's really important that we as SSAs and as Radish Park Business Alliance show some appreciation for businesses and particularly those that like are starting in such a difficult time. Um, we did something really similar uh, in partnership with the Edgewater Chamber along Devon Avenue um, because the northern part of Devon is Rogers Park and the southern part of it is Edgewater. Um, so we got together with our with our partners down there um, to do a ribbon cutting parade as part of their Devon Days event back in September. Um, that one was, I think, a dozen ribbon cuttings, um, some of which are pictured here, Health Mart Pharmacy, um, the uh, Thai restaurant, and um, Heartland Health um, opening a, a second facility. Um, so, you know, despite the, the headwinds of the pandemic, like our business community has, has proven itself to be really resilient and our entrepreneurs, you know, didn't shy away from starting new businesses during this time, which is really exciting uh, for, for them and for the community. Um, so we're, we're thrilled to have had the opportunity to celebrate with them through these ribbon cuttings. Uh, next slide. Um, another project that we do every year is our community profile and visitors guide, um, which is available on our website and also in print. Uh, we distribute print copies uh, at businesses throughout um, Rogers Park, uh, including um, our hotels. Um, so the Hampton Inn always gets a couple boxes, uh, as does the Super 8 Motel, the Emma Block House. Um, there's usually a, a stash at uh, the New 400 Theater, and uh, we also share it with Loyola University to pass around to students. Um, our guide is bilingual. Um, not the same cannot be said of, of other you know peer neighborhoods in Chicago, um, but that's you know important to us to sort of you know be be accessible and approachable to to non English speakers. And to really feature and celebrate 
not only like the information about our community, but the businesses that are here and all that they've been able to achieve in the last year. Um, marketing uh, for Howard Street in particular um, has been, you know, it's part of customer attraction, but it's also part of, of business retention. Um, supporting our businesses by by providing them with marketing support. Um, so Howard Street, um, I'll, I'll give a shout out to uh, to our team at A5, um, which is our, our marketing and branding firm that we use for Howard. Um, they've helped us out with creating campaigns for not only online and digital, but outdoor advertising. So what you're seeing here is uh, one of the bus shelter ads that we did earlier this year. Um, this one features uh, Athena Board Games. Um, so we around back to school time, bought up all the bus shelters that we could around Loyola University um, to introduce students to the great businesses that are on Howard Street. Um, so, oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, we also, as part of, of customer attraction slash uh, business retention, um, all of our SSAs plus our PBA um, are partners in a contract with the Silverman Group, which is basically our publicist. Um, so they um, get us earned media opportunities um, in local media, including um, print, radio, and television. Um, so stories about Rogers Park and Rogers Park businesses have appeared on basically all of the network news programs, the Chicago Trib, Block Club, um, Patch, um, WGN, Univision, Telemundo. Um, they set up TV and radio interviews. Um, they basically connect area journalists with area businesses um, so that they can get quoted in area in news stories about you know what's going on in the community. Um, so we're we're really fortunate to to have partnered with the Silverman Group, and you know they they get us a lot of a lot of love in local media. Um, so happy to have. I don't know if anyone from Silverman's here, but if you are, thank you for all that you do. Um, also, uh, Carolina mentioned earlier our business improvement program. Um, this one overlaps a little bit more with uh, public way aesthetics because this is our facade rebate program that we do in all of the SSAs. It provides a matching rebate of up to 50% uh, to up to a max of $5,000 um, for businesses making improvements to their storefronts. The most common request that we get for this program funding is for signage. Um, this year, we've also had a lot of requests for window replacement, um, sometimes tuck pointing and masonry, um, but the, the bread and butter of this one is signage. Um, so basically people use, can use it as a sign rebate program if they want to get a new sign, replace a damaged sign. Um, so this is sort of the before and after of El Sabor Pulano on uh, Clark Street. Um, so the before picture, they just had sort of the temporary like final banner signage. Um, and through this program, we were able to underwrite 50% of the cost of these really cool, um, window vinyls. Um, so it, it, you know, it looks really nice. It brings a pop of color to that storefront. Um, we, I think we've got another one. Uh, Tamales Lo Mejor de Guerrero got a new awning uh, with signage. Um, again, some vinyl on the glass. Um, Salon Zoe, they moved recently um, and were able to do lit channel letters um, and some window vinyl. Um, through this program. We also, I think, assisted some of these folks with design as well. Um, so it can be, you know, potentially design as well as the actual fabrication and installation of any signage and permits. Um, what made financial, another one. Um, so this was sort of a new building um, that's, I think, now almost almost fully leased up by Jets Pizza will be opening soon next door. Um, but one, one main was the, uh, the first uh, tenant to open in this new building at Clark and Estes. Um, and they were able to utilize the business improvement program for some signage and awnings. Um, I think this is Anna's wheelhouse to talk about our shop local campaigns, or is it, or is it still me? Sorry. <laughs> it's still you. Okay. Um, so yeah, shop local campaigns are, are sort of another area of overlap between business retention and, um, and customer attraction. Um, so the, the sort of signature one that we have every year that's going on right now is our Live Love Shop rebate program. Um, so basically we encourage um, residents, visitors, and everyone in between to shop at our local businesses during the holidays. Um, you can turn in your receipts um, to us. You have to have a minimum of, of $20 per business, at least four businesses. Um, if you have at least $150 worth of receipts from, from Rogers Park independent businesses, you get a rebate of $50. If you hit $200 of spending, you get a rebate of 75. 
Um, we fund that program primarily through the SSAs. Um, and last year, um, basically we had receipts turned in from uh, 149 different businesses. Uh, 155 people uh, submitted receipts to get rebates. Um, for a total spending impact of you know over $35,000 of spending at our local businesses in the community. Um, we hope to beat that this year. Um, we got additional grant funding uh, through the city for um, new marketing, um, which you see here, the, the different uh, ads that, that we've got going out in local media and social um, to basically encourage people this year more than ever to support local independent businesses. Um, that have stuff on the shelves that, that maybe aren't as impacted by all the difficulties in supply chain as your big box stores. Um, this is the year to, to really think about unique local independent gifts um, for your, fan, your friends, your family, um, and your community because shopping local um, really is, is a gift to, to the community by supporting the independent businesses that make it special. Um, Small Business Saturday, um, sort of the kickoff of Live Love Shop season. Uh, we've always done sort of a, a Small Business Saturday welcome station kickoff. This year it was hosted at the new 400 Theater. Um, so we had the, the tent and the pop-up pe people spot that you saw before um, that was set up outside. And we also had um, the snow globe art, which Nate Baranowski gifted to us last year as part of the Chalk Howard project, um, but it, it rolls up and can be moved around so that people can use it as a photo background. So um, we set that up as part of the Small Business Saturday Welcome Station at the 400 um, and let people take their Christmas pictures there. Um, we'll, we're gonna be setting it up uh, in the nearish future at, in the lobby at William White Park uh, Fieldhouse, which is where we had it last year. Um, we were happy to, to set it up um, for Small Business Saturday, um, Carolina um, did an amazing job hosting the, the welcome station. We handed out the, the Small Business Saturday tote bags that everybody gets every year um, and also um, had Bebito's Bites out to uh, provide some crepes for folks to snack on as part of this event as well. Um, so we had good weather and I think uh, good, good attendance. Uh, Shop Where Your Heart Is, um, we did sort of a, a similar um, promotion in the month of February, which is, you know, historically kind of a slow month um, for businesses after the, after the hubbub of the holidays dies down. So what we did with Shop Where Your Heart Is was, you know, receipt promotion again, where if you had a receipt of $20 or more from any of the local stores or restaurants, um, you could enter each week in the month of February. Um, and we raffled off gift cards for everybody that basically submitted a receipt through our online form. Um, for both Shop Where Your Heart Is and um, Live Love Shop, um, this is now the second year that we're doing um, online submissions of receipts. Um, we had to roll that out during the pandemic, but um, it makes it easier for folks that maybe can't get to our office or don't want to mail things um, to just take pictures of receipts and, and send them in through our online form. So we'll be continuing that this year um, and for Shop Where Your Heart Is as well. Um, 626 Day um, was also another community celebration that we did in the month of June. Um, on June 26th, um, sort of uh, to keep with the, uh, the 626 uh, portion of the Rogers Park zip code. Um, so we did some more, you know, raffles and promotions at area businesses to encourage people to, to come out and support uh, in the summer uh, as well. Um, so the other sort of piece of uh, business attraction retention is security. Um, this has been a hot topic, particularly this year, not just in Riders Park, but throughout the city. Um, it's always been a hot topic for Howard Street, um, which has always maintained as, a, as the SSA, um, several public way cameras aimed at the street and sidewalk. Um, we upgraded the majority of those cameras this year. And so what you're seeing here is the uh, camera dashboard that we have for all of our SSA cameras because they do have remote viewing enabled. So I have access to this, um, the businesses do as well, and we've shared it with the um, 24th District Police um, and CAPS folks. As, and right, it's funny, right after we got um, these, most of these cameras installed, there was an incident um, where the, the police reached out to ask for, for camera access and I was getting ready to send it to them anyway. Um, so they were already making use of the SSA provided cameras like pretty soon after we upgraded them all. Um, which is, you know, exciting. Next slide. Now it's Anna, business marketing. All right, I'll pitch it to Anna Bermudez, our marketing manager. 
Actually, it's Carolina. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I do want to give a huge shout out to Anna because Anna takes care of our business marketing. Um, and she is with us today. She wants to wave. Um, Anna Bermudez does an amazing job of promoting our businesses through social media and the, and the virtual world in general. Um, you can see here uh, that we do have Anna um, manage, I couldn't think of the word, manage several Facebook pages um, that promote a specific commercial district. Uh, obviously, in general, we have a Rogers Park Business Alliance page, there's a Devon page, there's a Howard page, there's a Clark page. Um, we um, invite you all to visit them. It's a really great tool to, um, you know, get yourself to be in the know of what's going on in the community, what's going on with each different district. Um, you, you get to learn a lot also through Anna's posts about specific um, details from specific businesses that you normally wouldn't hear about. You know, it is one of our intentions to support the businesses who aren't able to do their own social media marketing. So we do kind of give them a hand by promoting them through our Facebook page, through our Smart Business Alliance page. Uh, business Alliance page. Um, I do believe I've heard in many meetings that uh, we, pretty, we have a pretty good following. Um, I, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm not really in the know of what's good or what's bad, but I heard that it's pretty good. So um, if you uh, don't like Rogers Park Business Alliance, you better get on it, like it on Facebook. There's also Devon Howard and Clark Street and um, Glenwood Sunday Market. Um, there's even one for Devon Avenue and um, in, um, by Loyola, Rogers Edge. Um, we also do Instagram. Anna does Instagram. Um, she posts really, really, really amazing photos that just make you want to just just make you want to go and visit all these businesses. Um, I guess you can see here we have over two thousand followers on Instagram. Um, on the Rogers Park Business Alliance Instagram, there's also Glenwood Sunday Market, Howard Street, Devon, also present on Instagram. Um, and then here are all of our, um, I believe the term is handles and um, um, website addresses for all of our pages. So uh, I'm gonna leave this here for a second. If anybody needs to take a look. And now let's talk about, so that kind of is what we do. Um, it is a pretty long presentation, I know, but you know what? It is a lot of work to make this neighborhood be as great as it is. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about what we think or what we're planning on doing in 2022. Um, me and Cindy will alternate the this conversation, this presentation. Um, we mentioned before we are doing a reconstitution of SSA 24. So that is going to be, um, that's going to be prominent throughout the year. It's going to involve a lot of community meetings. Um, it's going to involve a, a process where we consult um, with someone to support us with the process of um, getting all of our paperwork together so that the reconstitution process can um, roll through seamlessly. Um, so look out in our social media for any future community meetings that we might be having where we're asking the community, um, you know, what it is they want to see more of or less of in the SSA. This will be a great opportunity to do that. Yeah, and that RFP for consultants actually will be out um, relatively soon. Um, so uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, we went through this process in 2020 with both SSA 19 and SSA 54. Um, so yeah, there will be a lot of opportunities for community engagement as part of this process for, for SSA renewal. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the other like really big project um, that'll be sort of really becoming more real and coming to fruition in 2022 is um, 
the al fresco project for both glenwood avenue and jarvis um so here is um actually this corridor site plans for both so glenwood appears on the top um and jarvis uh appears slightly below it where you can see um on the jarvis um site plan the uh the pavement mural in the center um all the outdoor seating areas um, and then the, uh, the dotted lines are where we're going to be building out this grid of um, wire supports between the planters uh, that can be used for, for decorations and shades. Um, yeah, and I know, think, Glenwood, uh, oh, yeah, uh, no, go ahead. I, I just wanted to add, and sorry to interrupt, but um, I think that the, and you mentioned this a little bit, Cindy, is that the exciting part about these alfresco projects is that not only are we going to be allowing for more business for the surrounding business area by adding additional seating um, and the beautification of the area, but there's there's going to be a lot more programming happening in this in these spaces that you would normally that that we're normally used to. So. Um, there will be more markets, there will be more movie nights, there will be space, public spaces for businesses to use for, for their own um, need to promote their, themselves. So I just wanted to add that programming is coming. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's always been sort of at the core of, of what has always made Jarvis Square such a special place for the community. Um, and it's something that we're excited to, to build upon for Glenwood as well. Um, you mentioned movie nights. Um, that's something that that we, you know, did um, on Devon Avenue this year. We used the Republic Bank parking lot uh, to host a series of movie nights uh, during the month of September um, that were really well attended. Um, and it's something that I think we're going to try and build upon in 2022. We've been talking uh, with the SSA commissioners about trying to secure the rights to feature some international films and some Bollywood movies, um, sort of you know consistent with and honoring the area's cultural heritage, um, and offering something that no other business district is doing. Um, you know, plenty of parks and and area chambers have movie nights. Um, but none of them are doing Bollywood movies right now that I know of. Um, so that's something that we want to bring to Devon Avenue because it'll be the, you know, the only place to do that in the city. Um, and it'll be an opportunity for, you know, people that are, that are from the South Asian diaspora to, to connect with, you know, movies from home, but also an opportunity for people that have maybe never seen a Bollywood movie to, to come out and, and, and experience that. Um, so we're really excited to, to work on that for 2022. Um, and then um, um, some additional public art. Yes, so more public art is coming to the SSA. Um, unfortunately, uh, we don't have confirmed designs yet or locations for some of the public art coming in 2022, but this slide does show you something that we are sure of that's coming and that is um, that we did get additional funding um, to be able to, you know, again, as a recommendation through our Vision Clark Street Master Plan, uh, we're uh, implementing one of those recommendations, which is to decorate the crosswalks at the um, at the entrances and exits of the Rogers Park Metro Station. So you will be seeing by June of 2022, um, some new crosswalks that look exactly like what you're looking at right now. Um, these are based on the brand standards that were created for Clark Street. Um, there are a total of six crosswalks that are going to be installed. Um, and, you know, the, the, the idea here is to um, highlight a very busy intersection, although you may not think so, it's a very busy um, pedestrian intersection because of the entrances and exits to the metro station. So we're really excited about these. These are super nice and super colorful. And I think, as a, again, I, I really, I really want to harp on how the the public way aesthetics of your neighborhood give you ownership and it make they make you love where you live, which means they make you want to shop where you live. So that's the intention. Um, another project that 
comes from the Vision Clark Street Master Plan is the Clark Devon Improvements Project. Um, I believe we are embarking on a $20 million project to improve the intersection of Clark and Devon. Um, I think this is going to be one of our major um, successes for 2022. It's been in the making since the plan was unveiled in 2018. 2018. Uh, we are BFFs with the Chicago Department of Transportation at this point. Um, we, uh, uh, we, we had with C CDOT, we have conducted several task force meetings and community meetings to invite the public's um, opinion on how certain things should look and how certain things should be based on the recommendation from the master plan. Um, if uh, you are new to this, um, I can tell you that some of the things coming are new neighborhood identifier, new landscaping, new medians, uh, reconstruction of the direction of Ashland and Schreiber, um, new light posts, new site furnishings, a renovation of the bus terminal, the Arthur Avenue between Ashland and Clark will be closed as a street and turned into a walkable plaza with a lot of greenery and site furnishings for people to kind of chill and hang out. Um, and in addition to that, just kind of make it an, an, an additional green space for the community, um, sort, of, sort of an extension of Schreiber Park. And um, fortunately, we, uh, we, we, we heard that it has been approved that the 24th district's main office is little outside plaza area in front of their office is also going to be part of these improvements. And so that you're gonna, you're gonna see some new, new newness over there. Um, if you were part of the community meetings and surveys, you, you were able to see some of um, the improvements coming to that area. So that is going to break ground in 2022. Um, I don't know what month yet. Um, and I don't know if it will be, it, uh, I don't know how long it'll take, but we, we were told that um, the, the completion of the project should be by end of 2023. However, break ground, ground break um, is scheduled for 2022. Um, in 2022, you know, depending on on where we're at with with the pandemic and health guidelines, we are hoping to to bring back um, chalk Howard and its original sort of close the street and do large interactive chalk installations in the road kind of format. Um, if coronavirus will allow, um, we hope that it will. Um, these were, you know, really excited to to bring back um, Chalk Howard as a community celebration um, that can draw people from not only, you know, the surrounding immediate community, um, but also really, you know, get the word out about Howard Street as a potential destination. Um, typically, the footprint for for Chalk Howard has sort of been east of the CTA tracks, so primarily around um, Howard, Paulina, um, Ashland, um, near William Wade Park. I think this. Uh, picture was was this on Paulina or Marshfield? I think it was Marshfield. Um, so that's uh, our colleague Rachel there uh, walking across the uh, the glacier that's been painted on the street with uh, with some little penguin buds. Uh, I don't know if this was one of Nate's pieces or if this was one of the other artists that we had. But when this uh, was done in the past, we had artists from around the Midwest and even around the country, um, as well as as Nate, who's local. Um, so we're really excited at the prospect of bringing this back um, in 2022, probably in July. Um, and we are also talking about um, partnering with some of the other community organizations uh, in the North of Howard area about, you know, doing some additional programming on Paulina, maybe some movie nights, um, things like that, um, to, you know, bring the community together um, and like have Howard be a, a community gathering place that's, that's safe and welcoming to all. New um, business open. Oh, I thought this was mine. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So new business opening. So um, we'd be remiss to not give shout outs to all of the businesses that that opened this year. 
um, in our business districts. You know, 2021 sort of continued to be sort of a weird year where we're all sort of getting our feet under us out under the, you know, after the pandemics, you know, maybe starting to subside a little bit, but you know, we're really fortunate that Rogers Park um, has has been able to welcome so many new businesses this year um, in all of our business districts. So um, many of these were many of these were um, honored as part of the sort of parade of ribbon cuttings. Um, some weren't just due to scheduling and, and things like that. But um, on at at Clark and Howard, we have um, Aspen Dental open recently, um, Horse Play Boutique uh, in Jarvis Square. Um, in SSA 24, um, Malloway Brothers moved to a new location. Rogers Park moves Pilates Studio. Um, she was a, a, a participant in the GROW program and has already moved into a brick and mortar store, which is really, really neat. Um, Getter um, is a on-demand grocery delivery that, that utilizes um, exclusively electric bikes and scooters. Um, so there's no vehicle traffic. That's open now on Clark. Um, Twilight Kitchen also on Clark Street. Um, is a chef-driven uh, business that he does catering, he does cooking classes, and he does ticketed like themed dinners. Um, so that's right near Clark and Tui. Uh, Another Bite uh, is a new owner that took over the Tapia's Pizza location on Clark Street. Um, so that's now um, sort of an all-day cafe, breakfast and lunch. Um, Mission Control Arcade Bar replaced, bar, uh, replaced Pub 626 uh, at Morrison Glenwood. Um, Wingman opened on Howard Street, um, actually a little bit west of the SSA boundary, but still, still sort of in our territory. Um, also on Howard, You Break, I Fix, and City Trends opened in Gateway Center. Um, One Main Financial and Wingstop are both in SSA 24 on Clark, um, as well as Idale Mini Mart. Uh, the Crazy Greek replaced SP Kebab in SSA 54 on Sheridan Road. Um, and then also on Howard Street, um, Fabulous Doll Boutique is a clothing store. Um, and Legacy Barber College um, opened up uh, just east of William White Park. Um, and they are now enrolling for the next semester, which is starting in January. So shout out to Legacy Barber College. So really exciting year as far as new businesses. We you know, got you know, some interesting ones on deck probably for 2022. Um, so congrats to all those who opened this year. and and. We welcome you to Rogers Park and encourage everybody to, to check these guys out and support them during Live Love Shop this holiday season. Thank you, Cindy. And I would add that, um, obvious, not obviously, but um, this these are not all of the businesses that were opened in 2022, 2021. Um, I think we counted over 40 businesses have opened since March of 2020 up to today, maybe more now. Uh, we don't have enough space in the slide to put all 40 um, businesses in here. So um, these are this yeah. is just a little little sneak peek of um, some of the businesses that have opened and joined us here in Rogers Park. So that concludes our presentation. We really, really, really appreciate your presence today. Um, it's good to know that there are, um, you know, stakeholders in the community who are involved and interested in the progression of our neighborhood. So um, we are very happy to serve the community and to, and to manage this program and make Rogers Park the beautiful neighborhood that it is. So I'm going to uh, hand it over to Sandy to close us off here. Um, Carolina, you did a great job. I couldn't say it any better. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you to Carolina and Cindy for this great presentation. Um, to the amazing Rogers Park Business Alliance staff and our board and everybody who um, helps us do what we do. We appreciate your um, financial support. We appreciate your volunteer support. We have a lot of, um, in addition to our board, all of our SSA commissioners and people who volunteer in our steering committees for Clark Devon and the other steering committees. Um, you know, they say it takes a village and we definitely agree with that. So thank you all for being here this morning and thank you all for all that you do. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank I you. Happy, you. Happy, holidays. You in person Happy holidays. Soon. Are there any questions? Oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> If you do have a question, 
Um, I would just invite you to unmute yourself and ask it. Or we welcome encouraging comments. Okay. That's great. Thanks so Thanks. much, everybody, for being Thanks. here. Yeah.